the ability in the household and I think that is critical for people. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Good afternoon, friends. Thank you for coming this afternoon to what's going to be a really interesting lecture. Uh, first of all, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of, and custodians of the land that we're on, the Gadigal people, and to pay our respects par to elders past and present. So, welcome to another Affinity Lunchtime Lecture. My name is Professor Rosemary Johnston. I'm the director of the International Research Centre for Youth Futures at UTS, and I've been a friend of Inf Affinity since it started, a long, quite a long time ago. A few years ago, and on several occasions, I was able to go with friends of Affinity to Turkey with other faith leaders, and I really enjoyed that. And while I was there, I was able to um, visit a number of institu institutions and schools. Are there any teachers here? Apart from Nina. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. I, I thought some of the Muslim school teachers might have come. And I know some of them, and I would have, was going to welcome them. But I just wanted to c affirm the work that they're doing in our community. I've been out to the schools, and I really affirm that work. For those of you who have not attended an affinity le lecture before, let me briefly introduce you to this organisation. Affinity was formed by a group of young Australians in 2000. And it's quite delightful to see, where is he? He's gone, Mehmet. Mehmet here, um, and he was one of, the, one of the co founders, but he's coming, I know he's going to come back. Um, some of these people are here today. Their aim was and is to promote multiculturalism and foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges between different groups in society. They organise not only lunchtime seminars like this, but many other events, including Ramadan home iftar dinners. To give you a brief idea of the wonderful work that Affinity does, They've put together a short video and you're going to enjoy it now. A great career and it's wonderful to see them in the context of a great organization, Affinity. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, especially uh, Mr. Ahmed Polat. Thank you so much. Thank you too to the foundation uh, for the opportunity to be here. Faith is so profoundly important for our development and humanitarian work. Because we've got some expertise here uh, that is, uh, when it's brought together, is extremely valuable. So I asked, the Vice President Global of Education for Microsoft, why? And those are the values that I would continue uh, to advocate being taught in law schools in this country. Uh, from a UN report describes Yemen as now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Thank you all for, um, for being here. Thank you, Ahmed, and uh, the Affinity team uh, for allowing me to, to speak, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight to help launch an exciting new lecture series focused on young people. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Barack and the Affinity Intercultural Foundation, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work that you do in the community and um, bringing different cultures and people of different religious backgrounds together. I think it's fantastic. How human rights safeguards children and young people. This is indeed a commendable goal and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of that dialogue. In my view, Affinity is doing excellent work to inform and advance multicultural Australia to keep peace in this country. Congratulations to Affinity. Thank you, Affinity, for this wonderful opportunity. I with Sev laud the work of Affinity. Uh, there is no other organization working in the field of interreligious relation that does it the way they do it and promote 
actual encounter of an ordinary sort between people of all sorts of diversities. I think it's heartwarming. It's one of the f few things in life that really continue to give me hope and joy. So what then I believe is that this identity politics to a large extent in India has not become obstacle for the development of democracy, but rather it has enriched the democracy. My day is very focused on thinking about that. Uh, we have, so we have a news conference at nine o'clock and then at half past two, which is the afternoon one is very much looking through to those evening digital sessions, but also of course the newspaper. Uh, can I just firstly just to say thank you to Affinity for the invitation to come along today. It's a great pleasure to be here this morning and obviously following some very esteemed company. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great privilege for me to be here also to acknowledge my parliamentary colleague Jenny Beyong. It's fulfilling to an extent, but there's got to be something that's greater than that. And that's how I see my contribution into Affinity and what Affinity does. So Affinity stands for promoting multiculturalism, stands for promoting interfaith dialogue, stands for promoting uh, good things in our community. Our speaker tonight asked me, um, as we were talking before, so are you involved with this organisation? And I said, yes I am, because I believe in what they do. And I'm very proud of them. I'm proud to be on the board. I want to thank Ahmed and your team for um, inviting uh, me to be along tonight. I have been here before and I've enjoyed it. This is probably my third time. And, and like Mary said, you know, it's that, and I think somebody actually on the DVD said, it's that opportunity for people who we live everyday lives just to be together and actually get to know each other and um, see each other as people first and foremost. So it's a really amazing thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. I think Affinity is a great organisation. I was going to wander around and talk, but I realised you only get to be on the video if you have the Affinity sign behind you. So I'm going to stay right in front of it. Sport is one of those um, codes that binds us in, in ways that are really quite significant. It also is a subject of deep and passionate division, and here I must declare first. <laughs> <laughs> the academies are a program to support and empower Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students to take control of their future through in-school and after-school support, and we are so proud of our contribution to helping improve the educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Western Sydney. And I've seen this uh, networking non-for-profit organisation go from its humble beginnings, working with the grassroots of Australia, and to now where we are creating dialogue with all Australians from all walks of life. And I'm very glad that Affinity has brought us together and brought us together with you. Thank you all very much for coming. I pay my respects to the indigenous people of our continental country, uh, and I pay my respects to uh, all the people who are connected with affinity and I think if Ataturk were around today he would thoroughly approve people reaching out uh, seeking to understand each other and in particular in countries of the book that we must be vigilant all the time to protect our human rights and of all our sisters and brothers in this community many thanks to affinity for inviting me to come along and talk to you about probably my favourite topic to talk about, which is the Anthropocene. And I think we've seen two diverse law schools here. Is it's important that um, law schools are different, uh, and in some respects that they stick to their knitting, that they, they deal with what they're most expert at. Creating better cohesive relationships and really making it a safe and I think a very happy place to live. And I think it gels very nicely with Ahmet's affinity theme because it's so related. It's, it's about restoring and promoting, I think, strong and healthy relationships throughout the community. What we tried to do at the Bangsam Poetry Slam and what we've been successful in doing is helping people find their stories and, and express themselves in a way that is cathartic for them. Looking to the future in terms of where these problems can originate, so part of this campaign to stop domestic or family violence has actually been targeted at young children. Now I'm not going to pretend for one second we got it right or that we still have it right. But we got a lot better at it. We introduced things such as domestic violence liaison officers. We've talked a little bit about education but um, actually we should be doing this with kids when they are at the very youngest age. Um, it's too late to start when they're teenagers. This is such an honour to be here tonight with the esteemed 
names that stood at the select home before me. It is very much a privilege and thank you to Ahmed, Burak and Ernest for having me here tonight. I think that what White is suggesting is that protesting has become a meaningless fad, that it is seen to be too readily engaged in without bringing about meaningful change. Once again, thank you for attending today. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Lovely day. Wow, what a year. Just clap for mm. it. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's now my pleasure, very great pleasure, to introduce today's facilitator, my colleague, Associate Professor Nina Burridge. Nina is an Associate Professor in Education at the Faculty of Arts and Social Science at UTS. Her family migrated to Australia in 1960 from southern Italy. She studied at the University of Western Sydney, became a teacher in schools in Perth and then in Sydney. In 1991, she came to Macquarie University Education and then the University of Sydney, and since 2005, she's been at UTS. Nina is quite political. <laughs> and I, I know that from working with her for quite a long time. She was president of the Australian Democrats between 2005 and 2006, and has been heavily involved in politics at all levels, including being a local councillor at Manly 1992 to 1995. She's an academic whose involvement in community organisations and social action groups inform her professional work. She's passionate about global justice issues, refugee rights, multicultural education, and the empowerment of women in many of the world's poorest countries. Please join with me with welcoming Nina to the podium. <laughs> 